Before we get started, a little disclaimer for fanboys, fangirls, and apple sheep out there. Okay, are we good now? Do I have your permission to criticize Apple? Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake, and today I'm gonna to be geeking out with you. We need to talk a little bit about the iPhone X and why you might wanna reconsider buying one. Currently, my daily driver is the iPhone 8 Plus, which came out recently. I have a review of both this and the iPhone 8 coming out for you because I kind of like actually using a phone for more than one day before I put out a review on it on YouTube. With that in mind, I wanna talk about the iPhone X because there are a few things you need to know before you consider buying one. I know everybody is super excited about this phone and I know Apple uh, loves to create hype about how revolutionary these products are, but the iPhone X, the iPhone 10, is not what you think it is in a lot of different ways. For one thing, it has uh, some hidden costs that you may not have considered. If you crack or damage your iPhone, 10 instead of your iPhone 8 or 8 Plus, you're gonna end up paying $279 just to repair the screen instead of either the 129 or 169 you would pay with the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 8 Plus. It's kind of a big deal, and I think it justifies paying for Apple Care. So that's a built-in cost into what is a $1,000 phone at the base model to get started for 64 gigs. Kinda of pricey there, Apple. It kinda of makes the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus a more practical option overall if you wanna stay in the Apple ecosystem. If you're just looking to upgrade your smartphone for 2017, 2018, then you might even wanna consider the Google Pixel or the Google Pixel XL2 if you're not tied to the Apple ecosystem. Maybe even look at the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the Samsung uh, 8 Note. Those are amazing phones, and spec for spec, product for product, they outperform their Apple counterparts. The advantage is just the operating system experience, the overall aesthetic and design, and maybe you are in the Apple ecosystem. But if you're not, and you just need a phone for having a smartphone, go check out the Samsung or the Google products. Additionally, for the price, compared to either the iPhone 8 or the 8 Plus, Essentially, here's what you're paying for for the $1,000 base model. You're paying for Face ID versus Touch ID, which is a new technology, and it's Apple's first iteration of it. Uh, I do not think that historically Apple has had a good track record of getting it right the first time. So you're essentially paying for a beta product. With the facial recognition stuff and what it can do, you're getting an emojis. But other than that, you're not paying for anything revolutionary besides a full screen display that you could have gotten on any other competing product, and that's not even truly a full bezel -less screen because notch gate, the notch design, that's a thing. Thing that in my opinion, Steve Jobs would have never signed off on, but we can't ask him. Miss you, Steve. Speaking of Steve's, even Steve Wozniak himself, one of the original, you know, Apple guys, he actually said that this will be the first iPhone iteration that he's going to skip. That is very telling to me. And this is a guy who buys smartphones from, you know, every manufacturer that he thinks is worthwhile. And, you know, he doesn't think that the iPhone 10, aka the iPhone X, is actually worth it and you can skip this one and get it next year. I think that that is a real strong indicator of the fact that this phone doesn't offer anything that truly special. The 8 and the 8 Plus, to me, are practical because they offer the new features and new technology, including the True Tone displays and the A11 chip. The A11 chip is also in the iPhone 10, so it's the same guts, it's the same processor and power. So ultimately, what you're paying for is a slightly better display, a slightly better front and back camera, and the name. And, of course, the notch. Those are the things you're paying extra for with the iPhone 10, iPhone X, whatever we wanna call it. I think iPhone X is kind of sticking and I know that Apple's kind of salty about it. But yeah, guys, I mean, I buy Apple products. Uh, I give them criticism because if you're going to spend that kind of money, I think it should be worth it. I think that in many ways, the, the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil are kind of a joke within the product line right now. And one of the things that upsets me is I see no reason why the Apple Pencil couldn't have been revolutionary and why the Apple Pencil couldn't have worked because I actually talked to somebody about this and based on the design and based on the A11 chip, they could have made the Apple Pencil work on any of these new phones. 
uh, and they didn't. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, they haven't done it for the uh, iPad mini and they haven't improved that product line at all lately. And so when Apple rolls out a new product and they talk about innovation, I really always have to take it with a grain of salt because again, the iPhone 10 is not doing anything really that special that the 8 and the 8 Plus don't already do and don't already provide you. You're paying extra money to be fancy and buy into a beta product that isn't really ready yet and is technology that Apple hasn't proven that it could get right yet. And so I think the next generation of the iPhone 10, the second gen model, will actually probably be an innovative product that has better features, newer features as perfected, the ones that they want to introduce. And the thing is design-wise, it might actually have some improvements as well. But those are my thoughts on why I just don't think that it's time to go in on the iPhone 10 yet. Not to mention that I think that it might be worth holding out until some people review it because they're already having supply chain issues. Um, they already are having issues with not being able to meet the demand of the pre-orders that they're getting. But anyway, how do you guys feel about the new Apple lineup of phones? Do you agree with me that most of what we need is in the iPhone 8 and in the iPhone 8 Plus already? Do you agree that there are competing products that feature for feature outperform it? Or do you feel like the iPhone 10 is the bee's knees and that everyone should just go out and buy one, suck it up and fork over the cash to Apple? Let me know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure you were gonna do it anyway. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome stuff on the channel. Uh, stay tuned for my review of the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. I'm gonna be doing an honest review on what my experience has been like after having used these pretty much day in and day out for a while. I'm going to explain why I still bothered to get uh, an 8 instead of just the 8 Plus and why uh, this form factor became my daily driver instead. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching and geeking out with me talking about the new iPhone 10 and why we might need to wait on it. Take care.